What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and it's really kind of sad that this past Sunday had the what could possibly be the series finale of Sherlock, which was amazing and worthy of being a series finale, and then later that same night you have this episode of Elementary, which just bland. So this is Season 5, Episode 12 of Elementary, I had to actually keep this open because it's so ridiculous that I had to make sure I said it right. Crowned Clown, Downtown Brown. The Hounds of Baskerville, A Study in Scarlet. Clown, Crowned Clown, Downtown Brown. This show, this season, it, it, in fact, it wasn't even the first four seasons. First four seasons, some of the, the episodes were a little bit strangely named. This season has been awful. Between Henny Penny, The Sky is Falling, or whatever it was, and now this one. And these are some of the worst names of episodes I've ever seen. But whatever. It's not really about the show itself. It's more, I guess, people just coming up with names. So what was up with this episode? Well... It wasn't that it was bad. It wasn't that it was poorly written or, well, I wouldn't say not poorly edited. There were a couple scenes that were kind of cut off, like mid-sentence almost, and it was just so it could reveal something later that we didn't get to see at first. <clears throat> well, the problem with it is, it's such a cliche story that I knew exactly what was going to happen about 20 minutes in. And the problem with that is, it's Sherlock. It's Sherlock Holmes. You know, it's not Sherlock, the, ep the other show, because that show is much better. But it's still Sherlock Holmes. You want to see him tackle these interesting, really diverse cases that you would never see anywhere else. I've seen this episode so many times on other crime shows. Somebody's poisoning this water supply, but it's not lethal. So, what's your first thought? Just hearing that premise. Somebody poisons the water... But it's not a lethal poisoning, and it's not contagious, it's just to make them sick. What's your first thought? Not terrorism, no. It's always whoever wants to make sure that... It, it's like a anti-terrorist attack, because somebody... like I've, I've seen other premises, not necessarily poisoning, but somebody will attack something, and they'll show like a, a hole in whatever's supposed to be pe keeping people safe. Just to show, okay, guys, we need to make sure we do this, and nobody, everybody's not listening to them. They're like, ah, whatever, your your theory's wrong. You know, nobody's actually going to poison our water supply, and then they do it to show that it can be done. And now everybody wants to listen to this person. Same type of thing here. This guy apparently has a patent of some sort of filter, and so he poisons the water so people will come to him for his filter, and he'll be rich. And how do I know this? Because halfway through. So, I can't remember the conversation, it wasn't even halfway, but they're having a conversation about the fact that the the poison was not lethal. And they're having it with these two guys who both work in the, the I don't know, water treatment facility, I think. It was very quickly explained where they work. But I figured it was going to be one of those two from the very beginning, just because of the fact that it wasn't a lethal poison. And so they finally find this out that's not lethal, and one of the guys is like, so what? He just wants to give them the diarrhea? I mean, who really cares about that? And the other guy's like, you're making light of this? I'm like, it's that guy. It's very clearly that guy. It's so obvious. You know, it, it's, the, it's not the one that is acting like a jerk, because that's the one that this episode wants us to think it is. You know, even at the very end, they bring him in first. So Gregson's talking to him. He's like, I think you're going to be very interested with what we have to say. I'm like... This is trying to fake us out. Sure enough, they bring him in. The other scientist is already there. They're all sitting there looking at him like, oh, he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. Just for Sherlock to turn to the other guy and go, it was you. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you got me. No, no, you didn't. You didn't get me. I understood. It's, uh, it would be less frustrating if this were NCIS. You know, NCIS... The cases aren't always that interesting. You know, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they're not even really a mystery. You know what's going on from the very beginning. This is Sherlock Holmes. 
That's all I can think throughout this entire episode. This is supposed to be Sherlock Holmes. This is supposed to be a guy who solves cases that the police can't even solve. And I'm over here, this is the second episode in a row where I've pretty much got it figured out from the very beginning because it's such a cliche crime story that I've seen in so many other shows that are not nearly as good as Sherlock Holmes are. So, I don't know. I don't know why they decided to do this. Aside from that, there's another story going on with Marcus. This guy bumps into him at a, well, bumps into him at a bar. He kind of sets himself up for Marcus to bump into him, knock his glass out of his hand, so that way he can get in, uh, pick a fight with Marcus. Marcus starts to fight him, and then, like I said, the editing on a couple of these scenes was weird. This is the first one. Marcus punches him in the stomach. I'm like, get that dick. Yeah, he was being a total asshole there. And then they cut off the scene, and all of a sudden it's a clown running through the forest away from some guys. It's... Hmm. Okay. Okay. I... How? What? Where Where did that scene go? I want to see Marcus beating this guy up. He, he was being a total douche. I want to see him get beat up, but no. They just cut away from the scene. So, okay, well, what's going on? And on top of this, uh, something I forgot to mention about the case, the clown is running away from these guys because apparently, you know, the whole string of, like, killer clowns or whatever that was going on several months back, or maybe it was only a few months back. How long ago was that? Anyway, however long ago that was, that's probably when this episode was filmed. It was like, oh, we got to do something with killer clowns, guys. So they're having the whole, you know, they're pranking people by running around just being creepy clowns. So they're chasing this guy, and then all of a sudden, he's dead, and it looked like somebody tried to bury his body, even though they lost him for a few seconds. And even one of the guys is like, we only lost him for a second. How is this possible? I'm like, I don't know. How is it possible? We never learned how it was possible. It, the guy was running away. Somehow, the guy that was pouring the sludge into the water saw him seeing him pouring the sludge in the water, killed him, and then buried his body before these guys who were just seconds behind him happened upon his body. And never got explained. If it did, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was paying attention, but if they did explain that, they did not make a very good explanation. I thought maybe it was somebody like leading them to the body, but no. Apparently it was just this guy got killed and buried in three seconds flat. So anyway, that was just something I forgot to mention at first. Back to the Marcus stuff. We find out that apparently he's dating this girl, who's the DA. The guy that he beat up comes into her office and starts raising hell. So now he's in trouble, not just with her, but with the DA's office. And I'm just like, really? This guy picks a fight with Marcus. Marcus beats him up. And then he goes running into an office, screaming about how he got beat up by a cop. And they're actually listening to him without consulting Marcus on this. And so, you know, he tells Joan about this. Joan talks to the girl he's dating and asks her about her ex-husband. Turns out to be the guy Marcus beat up. And all of a sudden, like, once again, with the, the second weird editing going on, we see she's asking her about her ex-husband. And then she finds out that her ex-husband was is an ex-cop. She's like, so what happened to get him kicked off the force? Cut. Next scene. Sherlock and Marcus are at whatever lab they were at to find out about the guy who made the virus. What was going on there? <laughs> Wait. Stop. Go back. You clearly cut off a scene right in the middle. You know what the whole point of this is? You know why the weird editing? Because they didn't want us to figure out what exactly was going to be the end game at the very end. Instead of showing us the scenes, instead of showing us the fight, which the bouncer has to tear him apart and then the guy pulls away using his right arm, and instead of hearing that apparently he got disability and it was something, it was something to do with his shoulder, instead of hearing those two things and allowing us to piece it together, they saved it for the end so it could be, oh no, twist! Why? This is a mystery show, correct? This is supposed to be a mystery show, so we're supposed to see clues and solve mysteries, along with Sherlock and Joan. 
and yet you took out the two key pieces of information that led to the final thing with Marcus. I understand that's not really the mystery of this episode, but it could have, it, it, it treated it like it was. You know, it treated, there's a problem, it needs to be solved, Marcus gets these two clues, pieces them together, and uses it on him at the very end, finds out that the guy apparently lied about his di disability to get disability pay. I would have liked to figure that out. I would have liked to see the fight, and then hear Joan talking to his ex-wife, and her say, oh, he got disability, and be like, wait a minute. But in that fight, didn't he throw his arm like this? How is he... How does he have disability for something like a torn rotator cuff, and yet he's still able to do that with no pain whatsoever? All we get to see, we get to see Marcus showing a video of the end of the fight, and then we get to hear about what sh she found out from Joan, or what Joan found out from his, his ex-wife. It's a waste. It's a waste of potential. You could have had two separate mysteries going on in the same episode. It would have made that that story a bit more interesting. But instead, it was just, I'm following along. I've already figured out this one case. I guess I'll follow along with the Marcus stuff. Oh, you figured it out for us. We didn't even get to really be in that one. Okay, sure. Because, you know, other shows that have tried to have two mysteries in one episode. You know, when Sherlock did that, and what was that, season one, I believe? There were two cases going on at the same time. Sherlock was solving his case, and John got asked to solve his own case, and Sherlock didn't want to help him, so John was like, I'm going to solve it myself. And then it turned out at the end of it all, it kind of tied together with everything. You know, All of the stuff that was going on with Sherlock's case tied into John's case, and it was all sort of interconnected. Whenever Psych did this, or whenever Monk did this, two great crime shows on USA, whenever they had two cases going on, where, you know, in Psych, Sean and Gus are trying to figure out their case while Lassie has his own case. And it turns out at the end of the episode, the two cases are tied together. That was so interesting. And even if they didn't tie together, it was interesting to see the two different cases going on at the same time. Instead, you decide to have this one very cliche case that was easy to figure out for anyone who's seen this formula done before. And then you have Marcus's stuff, which could have been a mystery, just condensed down to... We don't get to see the information until Marcus figures it out at the end. It's a waste. It's stupid. <sighs> I feel like I've made my point. <laughs> the The case itself was not interesting. The stuff with Marcus could have been interesting, was not. It's another failed episode. And the sad part is, I don't think people are seeing it. I go on IMDb, and these episodes are getting 8.3, 8.3. How? For For a show like Criminal Minds, which is not good... But even some of the better episodes of Criminal Minds are getting 7.5. And this is somehow getting an 8.3. I don't think people are seeing the issues here. I think they're just tuning in and say, Oh, I'm just going to... I don't care what other Sherlock adaptations say. What does yours say? Oh, this is funny. Oh, the case wasn't all that interesting. But you know what? It's its own thing. I don't... No. I, if you want to make an adaptation, that's fine. But stick to the source material. I don't mind the fact that you're trying to do Sherlock in New York, but this is not Sherlock. This is not Sherlock Holmes I'm seeing. This is just a, a pretty good detective who notices things every now and then. That's about it. The Sherlock Holmes I'm seeing in Sherlock and the Sherlock Holmes I'm seeing in this show, two completely different people. One is a great detective, maybe a little bit messed up detective, but a detective who knows everything who can figure out any case, he can solve any case, no matter what challenge comes his way, he can figure out a way out of it. This Sherlock, I don't think he, honestly, I think he could solve simple puzzles, you know, maybe, maybe if a simple case came his way, but get anything challenging, nah, he wouldn't last. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to figure it out. And that's what's disappointing. They have such an interesting concept that they have wasted, and they've toned down his detective prowess, they've toned down everything that I love about Sherlock Holmes, and now it's just boring and bland, and the cases are bland, and I don't even care to tune into this show anymore, because if the cases are interesting, why would you tune in? You know, all of these cases are becoming such simple cases, none of them are remotely interesting anymore. <sighs>
So, those are my thoughts on this episode. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you like and dislike about this episode? Do you agree with me about the show? Let me know what you can talk about and discuss. All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Sherlock reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.